Hi everyone, what's up? In this video, I'm going to explain some commonly asked SQL join interview questions, including cross join, semi join, and anti join. So, this is a part 2 video, and in the first part, I had discussed inner join, full join, uh, left join, and right join, along with some interview questions that are asked. So, if you haven't seen that part, then the link is in the i button as well as in the description. Finally, I have discussed a bonus question at the end, so don't miss that out and watch the video till the end. This is a new series that I have started on SQL interview questions, but if you are interested to know more about PySpark interview questions, then do check out my other playlist, the link is in the i button as well as in the description. In that I have discussed various PySpark topics and what questions are asked on them. Topics like date functions, RDD operations, and user defined functions, and various other functions I've discussed in that. I'm going to add new videos to both of these playlists every week, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you found this video useful, then please show some love by pressing the like button. So, here is the question for the video Display the output when joining table 1 and table 2 using cross, semi, and anti join and also find the total records after each join. So in order to solve this, I have created three tables here. As you can see, table one, table two, and table three. You can use this notebook. The link is in the description. You will have this all these queries in this notebook. And uh, let me show you the data. So here is the table one. As you can see, we have triple one, two, then triple three. Then we have table two. We have two ones, two twos, four, and null. And finally, we have table three. We have triple one again. 2, there are 2 nulls here and 3. So first we are going to learn how to solve this question using cross join. So the first join is cross join. Cross join returns a combination of each row in left table paired with each row in right table. So there are some rules for cross join. Every record from left table will try to match with every record from right table. Even if it doesn't match, it will be populated in the result. So let me explain you this with an example. Uh, I have this table 1 and table 2 and we are going to perform cross join on it. So let's just consider the first element of table 1. Okay. Now this one will match with all of them. So you can see one is matching with the top two uh, rows of table 2, but it is not matching with uh, the next uh, four rows of table 2 that is uh, 2, 2, 4 and null. But still in the result we will be populating it because that's what cross join does. So I have just written the output of the first record of table 1 that is 1. So in front of 1 we will just plainly write whatever elements are present in table 2. So I've just copied the table 2's element in the right in, in the second column of the result and just written the 1 in front of them. So I hope you are getting what happens in cross join and if you want to find the total number of records uh, the formula is total number of records in left table multiplied by total number of records in right table. So this is also called Cartesian product. So in our uh, left table has 7 records and the right table has 6 records. So that gives me 42. And if I display the result here, you can see each element from left table is joined with each element from right table. So the top 6 record are the result for just the first record from table 1. That is this one. So I hope you're understanding what is happening in this cross join. Maybe you just try to uh, display it out and you will understand or you can just search what a Cartesian product is. Um, basically it is a multiplication of each element in set 1 multiplied by each element in set 2. Now what happens if you perform a cross join with a join condition? Basically the result will be inner join. So I'm trying to join table 1 and table 2 and I'm doing a cross join here on table1.id equal to table2.id. Now this time it will not map every element with every element rather it will check what elements are matching. In short it will just perform inner join. So if you get question like this in the interview just remember if a join condition is involved with cross join just perform inner join to it. Now let's uh, take a different example. So I've used this table 3 and table 2 and you can see these are the elements. Um, so I'm going to perform cross join on these two and what do you think should happen? So every element from table 3 will be mapped with every element from table 2. Let's check that out. As you can see this one is mapped with every element in table 2. That is 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, null. Again the second uh, record of table 3 that is uh, 1. So here this one again is mapped with every element of table 2. So this is what is happening with the rest of the portion as well. 
and if I go to the null, so this null will also be mapped with every element of table 2. As you can see, let's uh, take up this one. So this is uh, this null is basically this one and it is mapped with all the elements of table 2. Same goes for the next null. So the next null is uh, this one. This is also mapped with all the element of table 2. I hope you're understanding this. Now if I uh, try to perform um, some join condition in the same tables, basically I'm joining table 3 and table 2 and I'm doing a cross join and I'm, in, and I'm involved a join condition here that is the id should match then again what it will return me is the result of an inner join so i hope you understood the how cross join works now let's check out semi join coming to semi join now semi join returns the rows from left table which are matching with the right table basically your result will have values from the left table only now i'm using this example to solve the semi join and let's go through some rules first First rule is find all the records in left table which are matching with the right table. Let's take a look. So you can see this one is one matching record and this two is one matching record. Correct. So return all these matching record from the left table. Now if a record is uh, in left table matches with multiple records in right table then return only one instance. So what does this mean? If I consider this one element that is one, it is matching with two rows, this one and this one. So in case of inner join, the result for this particular one will be two rows, right? But in semi join, we will only return one instance of it. Basically, this one, because it is matching with two, we will not keep two records in the result. We will keep only one record. Same goes for this particular record as well. This two is matching with two rows in table two, but we will only keep one instance of it. And uh, final rule is null is avoided as it is unique. Now, if I go to the results first, you can see uh, it has triple one and two. Now an easy way to understand uh, semi join and remember during the interviews. First, look at all the matching records from left table and just plainly copy them into the final output. So that's why you're getting triple one and two in the output. And if, or if you want to find the total number of records, then it is total number of matching records from left table. That is four. So it's that easy, right? Uh, I hope you understood semi join. Let's take a look at some more examples now. So one point I want you all to remember is which one is the left table because left table plays the major role when performing semi join. Here in this example, I'm performing a join uh, with uh, table 2 with table 1. Basically what I'm saying you is table 2 is my left table, correct. So if I perform semi join, what I will check now, the first rule is check all the matching records um, from left table which are matching with the right table, right. So here from table 2, I can see the 1, 1 and 2, 2. These are the matching records. Finally, if I perform semi join with this information, I get this particular result. I hope you're understanding what I'm trying to explain here. Uh, basically, remember which one is the left table and pick only the matching records from that left table. OK, now let's take a look at the final example. So here I'm joining table 3 with table 2 and here are the records. You can see triple 1, 2, there are two nulls and 3 in table 3. And in table two, we have two ones, then two twos, then four null. So again, uh, the first rule of uh, semi join was we have to check what records in left table are matching with right table. So here I can see these triple one are the matching records and this two is a matching record. And if I display the result, you can see we have the result for uh, left semi join. I hope you understood what I'm trying to explain with semi join here. Now let's take a look at anti join. So coming to the final join of this video that is anti or left anti join. So anti join returns rows from left table which are not matching with right table. It is directly opposite of semi join. Here are some rules of anti join. Find all the records in left table which are not matching with right table. Return all these non matching records from left table and null is not avoided in this join. So this point is something to consider which is a difference between um, anti and semi join. Now I'll show you one example. So here we have table one and table two and these are the same records which you have seen in earlier examples. Now if I have to perform um, anti join between them, we have to think about which one is the ta uh, left table. In this case, table one is the left table. So if I perform anti join, I have to find out which record is non matching. So if I closely look at the records, these triple three are the non matching records. Basically these triple threes are present in my left table but they are absent from my right table. 
so if i perform the uh, anti join you can see my final result has triple three let's move on to another example so this time my question says join table two with table one so this signifies that table two is my left table now similarly i have to see in table two which are the non-matching record so if i look closely the uh, double one and double two are matching records so we can avoid it but four and null are the non-matching records so my final result will have four and null if i perform the anti-join as you can see i have four and null in my final result so i hope you are getting what um, anti-join does here so let's take a look at one final example so here i have table three and table two and uh, you can see the records here so table three has triple one two two nulls and three and uh, table two has double one double two four and null and because i'm joining table three with table two so table three is my left table again we have to go back to the rules of antigen we have to find out which are the non-matching records so null is always unique so these two nulls are non-matching along with three this is also non-matching so if i perform anti-join uh, from table three with table two what i will get null null and three so i hope you understood what anti-join is it is very easy and uh, anti-join and semi-join are directly opposite of each other so if you have understood these two then you can also answer the question like you know tell difference between uh, semi and anti-join now i have one bonus question ready for you so let's take a look at that so here i have one bonus question for you what will be the result if you perform semi-join between table 1 and table 2 and then perform anti-join with table 3 so as you can see i have these three tables with me that is table 1 and table 2 and here are the um, values in the id column and here is the table 3 with same id column and here are the values so i hope you're understanding what the question wants you to do so what i want now is pause the video and try out this question on your own and uh, um, when you come back we'll discuss the result so i hope you tried this question on your own but if you didn't that's okay let's discuss the solution now so the first uh, part is find the records in table 1 that are matching with table 2 so which are the records so i can see triple 1 and 2 these are the records from table 1 that are matching with table 2 so this will be first part of my solution now because we are performing semi join so we have to avoid nulls okay and the final part is find the records from result of semi join that is triple 1 and 2 this is the result of semi join now out of this which are not matching with table 3 now table 3 we have here so in my final result let me let me show you that this is my final result i am calling it table 4 i got triple 1 and, tri and 2 so out of this which are not matching with table 3 as you can see all of them are matching with table 3 so it will res uh, return you no result and if i run the query you can see the query return no result so this is a common interview question that is frequently asked and it is just to trick you what the result will be uh, if you even write one uh, element from each of the table that means a wrong answer because in reality it doesn't return you anything so i hope you understood this question but if you didn't try to solve it one by one basically try to first run the semi join and use that um, output to then run the anti join and that's it so that's it for this video if you found it useful then please share it with your friends and like the video. In the coming few weeks, I, will, I have planned many such videos on PySpark and SQL interview questions. So stay tuned for them. And if you have not subscribed, then please press the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.